First, I want to say I was recording the video that was to be uploaded yesterday. We had a power outage. And everything that I had recorded got just, just, it just went up in smoke. So, was I going to sit there and do that again? No. I went to bed because I was pissed. So, here I am and I'm going to record something but it's not what I was doing last night. But I do want to talk about this because I was kind of going over the comments on the forum yesterday under some of the videos. I don't remember which one this was under because I copied and pasted it into a document. But this young lady uh, was talking about discipline and she asked the question, should step parents discipline step children? And that evidently she was in some forum, some topic, and the, the, the person had posted a meme that showed a child getting hit. And she says some of the parents said yes, including physical discipline. Some said yes, but no physical discipline. And she was saying she didn't understand why some of the males got angry and insisted that they would physically discipline the stepchild whether the mother likes it or not. Now I want you to keep that in mind. Keep that 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 sentence in the front of your head one woman said that she would rather beat her kid herself then another male got angry and said that shows the step parent has no real power in the household if he can't physically discipline the stepchild he said this is why men don't want anything to do with single mothers fuck them outside the house be selfish and if someone punches the kid we ignore it leave their behind i feel as though not everything calls for physical discipline but i'm aware that some people do this I guess I'm just lost on why some of the males feel the need to argue and try to change the minds of those who said no physical discipline. They sound controlling as all hell. And she's right. I, you know, in my household and my daughter, you know, her, her dad, my husband was there, but he never touched her. He never even spanked her hand. He, his mindset was that he didn't want her to ever associate someone who loved her like a male whose claims to love her who would be beating on her and i to my recollection i remember three times that i had to spank her butt so that fell on me and all three times it was because she did something that was extremely dangerous it wasn't because of of uh, her behavior in other ways because i'm a master at the mind fuck i will make your ass feel just so confused and distraught and, and never lay a hand on you i can do all of that with words and every parent should be able to have that kind of effect on their child because as they've been growing up you've been instilling in them the mandate that they respect you as their parent when you don't do that when you let your kids get away with stuff and then you magically expect them to be able to to listen and mind you and all the stuff when they're older see that doesn't happen and you don't need to yell and scream at your children either and uh, you know talking to them like they have some sense even if they don't have any yet is important you got to establish that kind of rapport with your child and so that they respect you and admire you and want to please you that is the key to to mental discipline so you never have to touch your child you can make them cry by just telling them the reason i know this because that's something that's what my daddy did to me oh my god if that man said that i disappointed him i feel like i would cry for a week that would hurt my soul i mean just thinking about it right now makes me feel crushed and there was nothing that hurt me more than to know that he that in any respect I had disappointed him I made him question me and my abilities or anything like that that's the kind of rapport that parents who that parents have with their kids who they never have to touch them they didn't they even have to really raise their voice to them they just talk to them they might give them times out take their phone you know bad make them stay in their room or whatever i mean you know there's they're gonna, they're gonna be some tools that they use but it's never gonna be physical discipline i associate and, and even call it whipping right they call it get somebody got a whooping okay that's some slave master shit you know and black as black people you know you need to be aware of your mentality and the terminology that you use and what you're communicating to your children when you start talking about a whooping you turn it into your master buck over your child no no, 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 no. Do not do that. There's no, never a reason to really, you know, be pounding on a child. 
make that little hand a little whack on the butt or something like that and that's that should be the end of it and that's what I had to do with my daughter one time she was playing with matches okay she had a little candle in the house and I'm like look at that smell the smoky smell and it was like the wax had dripped onto the carpet oh my god I thought I was gonna just I was so upset I was so upset because not only did you know could it have burned us up it could have burned the whole building up and you know killed hurt in maimed or killed or hurt other people as well and another time I was holding her hand she let go of my hand and ran out in the street on Market Street in downtown San Francisco all those taxis and buses and people driving like maniacs trying to go I was just like you know I was terrible I thought she was gonna get hit and, and just die she was only three and uh and i never seen a kid move so fast but uh you know those are the, those are two times and i remember and another time she got lost in a store again and she was standing right by me i turned around to look this girl is gone but that scared her more than it scared me because i used to have this little wrist wrist leash thing that i would put on her and uh, she used she didn't like it so this particular time she didn't have it on and she had wandered off and was hiding in the clothes you know in the rack of the clothes but i didn't know that i'm calling her looking for her everywhere and then she came out and she went in the wrong direction so she couldn't she didn't you know by then i was like looking like further away from where i was so she came out and she didn't see me anywhere so she starts crying and stuff and the clerks get her and i mean it was this whole big deal but by the time i found her she was so hysterical that she had lost me that she used to ask me to put that wrist leash thing on her after that she wanted it on so those are the three times that i recall that i whacked my daughter's butt and and you know like she was like under she was under four uh, all times and after that I never touched her my husband never touched her and that was the end of that but you know this woman's letter where she's talking about um, these guys who want to insist on hitting somebody's child now see they you I saw a video on media takeout I wish I could download it where a father beat a, a mama's boyfriend's ass for hitting his kid he pounded on that guy like there was no tomorrow. He was swinging him around that parking lot like he was a rag doll. And it's like, you know, you're a grown man. You do not need to ever put your hands on a little kid, especially a little girl. And these dudes who want to insist on hitting a kid, whether the mother likes it or not. See, those are the ones that you see online in the newspaper who have beat the kid and the kid's in the hospital and people want to blame the mother saying well you know she shouldn't have, she should have known and she should have she 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 no this boyfriend who's the one who did it is the is the one who should suffer all the repercussions now if you are a mother and you have a man who tells you some shit like this that he's going to do it anyway you're supposed to get rid of him now in those instances if he warns you like a rattlesnake shaking his rattle and you don't you know get that fool away from your child well then yes you should be prosecuted right along with him but if you know he's shown no signs of doing anything like that but the next thing you know your kid is in the hospital with broken ribs and stuff well what are you supposed to be fucking psychic you know what i mean that's just ridiculous but i am not a fan of that and i really am concerned when men show signs of being abusive because if he's going to be abusive towards you then you can bet he's going to be abusive towards your child this next letter that i got in uh, goes into that a little more more this woman says you know she separated from her partner three years ago and their little boy who's six um, has a great relationship with his dad the dad moved to be close by them so he sees his son very regularly and now she's been in this new relationship for just over two years so after a year of dating she introduced him to her son the kid liked the guy you know they formed a strong bond and then she started making uh, plans for this clown to move in with her and the little boy the little boy was excited she says but this is the problem i love my partner very much and for the most part our relationship is harmonious happy and calm however he has a fiery temper and on the odd occasion that we have argued he became extremely irate and vocally aggressive i would like to point out that he has never been physically violent and i'm certain he never would be huh, famous last words in the two years of our relationship there have been about five occasions when he has shouted and sworn at me during an argument then walked out of the house and driven away now see you got one time with deb 
you get one time. There would never be two, three, four, and case in situation number five. It wouldn't happen. You watch what you say to me. You start cussing at me. We're through. Okay. So then she continues. Now that he spends more time with my son, there have been occasions on which time when which my partner has disciplined him. I don't have a problem with this as my partner is assuming the role of a stepfather. This will sometimes be necessary. The problem is that there have been times in recent weeks when I have felt my partner has been too harsh and I have found that I have been on edge when I know the three of us are going to spend time together in case my son's behavior might provoke him. In a recent incident, my partner shouted very loudly in my son's face about what I felt was a minor incident. My son was shocked and frightened and hysterical afterwards. My partner apologized to him immediately, but I was extremely upset and angry. I felt I was in a difficult position as I didn't want to tell my partner not to treat my son that way in front of him, but I also didn't want my son to think I agreed with my partner's action. I don't know why she, that's not difficult. You tell him, get your, you better shut up. Don't you ever talk to my child like that. Later that night, I expressed my concerns to my partner. He reiterated that he felt dreadful and that would never happen again, but we did argue over it and I have been worrying about it ever since. This morning, I mentioned about my partner moving in and my son said, sorry mom, I don't want X to move in anymore. He kept saying he was so sorry if it had upset me and it's okay if he moves in if you still want him to. So the kid's trying to, you know, please his mom. I do not know how to proceed. I love my partner, but his actions have left me with many concerns. I'm also very worried that my son may discuss this with his father, who would obviously and understandably take a dim view of things. Okay, so that's the end of her letter. Um, this is the kind of thing that happens a lot. And, you know, in the black community, when you have so many single mamas, and, you know, these this, this string of boyfriends over a period of years, um, this is something to be very concerned about now you, you, the, the discipline as far as you know giving a time out um telling them to stay in their room till their mother gets home you're going to you know if they were going to go somewhere nice you was going to buy them something something that goes up in smoke that kind of stuff is a, is about all that a boyfriend gets to do you don't get to yell at my child and you don't get to touch them and you know the women who allow that kind of stuff are walking on quicksand men have too much strength they don't know their strength sometimes and when they get angry that's when your children will end up in, you know needing hospitalization or needing a, ca a casket because they do stupid stuff when they when they get angry and men should never be around small children alone so these women leaving the men to babysit their you know six month old and two year old and all this stuff the kid that's the most dead <laughs> dead by child abuse in the world are two year old children Something about them two-year-olds trigger something in men, and they kill them. So you women with these little kids, I don't know what you'd be thinking. I don't. I honestly don't know what you'd be thinking. They should never babysit your children. They should never have any responsibility where you're not there for your children. Those are your kids. It's your job to take care of them. It's your job to protect them. It's your job to get them to adulthood in one piece. And it's your job to make sure that they arrive at that destination mentally and emotionally sound. That means, you know, I mean, I'm not telling you who you can't screw and all this other stuff. But if you, as just, you know, just say over a period of 10 years, you have three or four boyfriends, okay? They're, you know, halfway serious relationships. It's not like you bed hopping, but, you know, you be with them a couple of years and then you break up. Then you get a new dude. You be with them a couple of years, you break up. Okay, what? So is each one of these people going to be beating on your kid? I mean, did you guys ever think about this kind of stuff? You got all these, you know, the string of dudes. And you want each one of them to have stepfather responsibilities with your child when they're not the stepfather? They just your fly-by-night, two-bit piece of shit boyfriend? No, I can't roll with this. I'm just telling you a bunch of stuff I want you guys to be thinking about. Like I said, over the course of this month, that's what you're going to be doing. I'm going to be presenting things that I want you to think about. And you, as a single mom, you know, yeah, you want to you know, communicate that you trust your man and that we in this together and, you know, we a family and all this old stuff. But you're putting your kid is as the, as the litmus test here. Your child is the litmus paper upon which you want to write this relationship. No, the relationship is between you and, and this dude. And your kids really should not be a part of it. And if you got a dude that's hanging around your house so much that he feels like he's, you know, in a position where he 
should have the right to discipline your child, then you need to make sure he stays in his own house more more often. Your children should have some time to be alone in their own house without him being there so that your attention is focused on them, not on this dude. So I don't know. I have a real problem with this, but I want you guys to understand that, um, you know, you, you, you got a man who's telling you or he, his attitude is that whether you like it or not, he's going to be pounding on your kid. What does that tell you? Do you did you ever like think about what that might mean? So if he feels like he can hit your kid when he wants to, then he's going to feel like he can screw your kid when he wants to. You guys need to think about this. This is a man who has no respect for your authority. He's all about what he, you know, what he thinks he deserves as a quote man. No, 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 Holmes. You ain't do it. These kids came out of me. So the only one who has any authority here is me. And you ain't the husband, you know, doing somebody, you're going to talk about getting married and, and merging your household or stuff. Well, then you guys need to sit down and have a serious conversation. But I still advocate that if those children are the moms, that the mom be the only one that, that levies any physical discipline, should that be necessary. But like I said, I really think, you know, it's, that's the weak way out. That's the weak way out. If you always pounding on your kids, you're not a good parent. So you, you need to understand how to get your kids mentally. And once you can get them mentally, you got to teach them to respect you. First of all, I got to say that over and over. If you got your kids' minds right, then you won't ever have to even think about uh, hitting them. You just give them the look or you give them some terse words and they will straighten, it, straighten right up because they already know. So um, I don't know what else to say about this, but I do want everybody to think about the ramifications of being very lax with letting you know every dude that you get intimate with that comes around be a disciplinarian over your children especially if they're thinking that he has the right to put his hands on them and uh you know i know teenagers are difficult i know one woman who broke up with her actually she called the police on her boyfriend because he took her 14 13 14 year old son and had him up against the wall by the throat kid couldn't breathe he was like like about to pass out and had pissed his pants and everything he was so scared so she called the cops on that mf and uh and got him up out of there but you know why did it have to get to that point there had to have been some signs that this man was violent and had a negative attitude towards this little boy and uh you know this you know what i mean it's, it's not going to just happen out of the sky i mean he he had to have expressed something that would have been a warning bell but whatever it was she took care of it and he got locked up for child abuse and uh, the little boy had to go to the hospital and I mean, it was a big mess. So I understand about teenagers and how they will test you, but um, there's no reason for a man to ever put his hands on on your children, ladies. Never, ever, never, never. I don't care if you married to him and been married to him for 50 years. He does not need to touch your children. Now, you got a grown son, like baby boy, that Melvin had to, you know, get so-and-so, uh, what was his, uh, baby, well, whatever his name was, Jody. Melvin had to get Jody straight. You know, but Jody was spilling himself, and Jody was not a kid. He was a grown man, so that's different. You're gonna be a grown man talking to another grown man like a crazy, like a fool, and he jacks your ass up. Well, then that's what you get, and you should have shut up. But I'm talking about little kids, you know, minor children. So um, keep, you know, think that, think about that, and we can talk about it later in the comment section below. This is Deb Cooper for SurvivingDating.com. Video a month, February, marching forward. Talk to you guys later.